this is the podium. So this is where Ambassador Alba was to give his speech. The stage was set up nicely, however, there was... Where was the audience supposed to sit? Hmm... Perhaps they were supposed to sit around the edge of the pool? That's such poor planning! If there was no place other than the spot or two by the pool, they really should have made seating arrangements like how the gallery is set up in court! Indeed! You can sense that consideration for the viewers was sticking with those. So in the end, the speaker and the audience were to stand the whole time, huh? Yes. Although I suspect the audience would have liked to sit down after a while. Yeah, they were meant to stand. There is nothing else around, so I'm gonna talk with the... Uh, I'm gonna talk with the... 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 the, um, the agent. How is the investigation proceeding on your end? Langzi says that's top secret. If you are going to attempt to admit it, you're imitate your superior, at least do it well. I don't suppose you believe in the accidental leakage of information. I'm gonna talk to Lang. Have you finished checking out all by the snow? Have you finished checking out all the bystanders? Yes, sir! And we found 14 counts of pickpocketing, 16 counts of illegal parking, and one person ran a light, sir! Don't tell me we didn't find out anything related to the case! Sir, not a single thing, sir! Well, for now, let's just get those other lawbreakers down to the precinct. Oh boy! 31 arrests! More to the count! Game! Agent Lang! Well, if it isn't Mr. Prosecutor! I would just like to thank you for your assistance earlier. Make no mistake! It's not like I was trying to help you with what I did! After I left, did you receive word from Ambassador Alba? We're to wrap up our bodyguard assignment at the end of the day. Oddly enough, we received word from HQ to return home on an urgent matter. <laughs> As if I can be so easily called away from this case after I've gone this far. I swear that I found the truth and drag it out screaming into the light. You're with me on that, right, Mr. Prosecutor? Dot, dot, dot. Hmm. Yetagarasu's appearance. Okay. You were working as Ambassador Zalma's bodyguard at the time. So naturally, you witnessed when the Yetagarasu's appeared, correct? Yeah, I saw the thief all right, with my own two eyes. The picture of the... The Yatagarasu was always there, lurking in the shadows. But when the spotlight were turned on for... Turned on for... Ambassador Alba's speech, a shadow appeared. That's when cries of, It's the Yatagarasu! rang out. Then the next second, the spotlight went out. And by the time we got to the area lit again, the deaf thief had vanished. When we investigated afterwards, we found out that the reason the light went out was because someone had unplugged the extension plug for all the outdoors electronics. Whether it was someone doing it on purpose, or simply a guest who had tripped over it, we'll never know. But one thing is for certain. The Yatagarasu was here. So are you saying that, basically, all you saw was a the thief silhouette? Yeah. Objection! If all you saw was a shadow, 
then it's entirely possible that the shadow belonged to someone else. Ha! Huh. Good thinking, sis. You just might be right. If it weren't for the fact that there was no one else with that same shape, not among the staff or the audience members, my men have already done a thorough check of everyone, so I know I'm right. Someone else's shadow? Yeah, that's my theory too, but we need to find uh, what was put on the statue to, to, to make it appear like that. Because right now, both spotlight were um, messed with because of the panic. So it's gonna be duro to it's gonna be difficult to recreate how the spotlight were set. Unless we have little teeth! That sounds like a plausible hypothesis. The suddenly appearing and disappearing shadow of the Yatagarasu. I believe I figured out its true origin. I expected no less from my subordinate. Now, let's hear what you know on the subject. What really cast the shadow on of the Yatagarasu? Okay, I'm gonna select the Primidoc statue, see if it works. Take that! The suddenly appearing and disappearing shadow of the Yatagarasu? Is it not possible that it was created by this statue? Objection! Are you playing me for a fool, Miles Edgeworth? This statue bears absolutely no resemblance to the shadow of the Yanagrasu! You're correct. However, this statue is but one part of the whole picture. What do you mean by only one part? What is the other part of the real form of the Yatagarasu shadow? Uh Okay! I don't know! I'm checking left and right. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna save. I'm gonna select the spotlight. But, um, unless... No. I'm gonna try the other statue. The woman and man statue will overlay on top of each other to create a different form. I'm gonna say that. It's another statue! The Yatagarasu's shadows was made from the shadows of these two statues. Made? What do you mean by that? Right now, the spotlights are all over the place. This is because they were moved when the guests were in the panic state. However, if we were to restore the light to where they were, when the thief appeared... You believe that the two shadows will create the Yatagarasu's shadow? Precisely. Now then, watch as I reveal the true form of the Yatagarasu. First, if we set up a spotlight to cast a shadow of King Primidox and the battlefield... Okay. Yeah. The shadow of the King statue would appear on the backdrop of the stage. And now we see the man with the 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 sword in, up in the air and uh, I don't know what's produced the thing that looks like an helmet but um, because that's not the, that's not the Crudox's here Likewise, if we set the light up on the queen who spoke to, of love to King Primidox. Okay, her silhouette will also appear on the backdrop of the stage. Now we see the, 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 the shadow of only the women, of the woman. 
but uh, like she she's doing a pose with uh, an arm down and an arm up, like her left arm is um, is doing something, but I don't see how both of them. I don't see how both statues reproduce the 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 figure, but we'll see. Aha! So if we were to combine the two shadows, <sighs> you know, it looks nothing like the Yatagarasu's shadow. Yeah, that's what I said. How's that, George? How do you explain this grotesque shape? Calm down, Francesca. The way the light needs to be shown on the Queen statue is wrong. What do you mean by that? I believe that the whole of the King's shadow needs to be used for this to work. However, in the case of the Queen, I don't believe her whole shadow is needed. Rather, the person who created the shadow only used one part of her shadow. Only one part? Okay, now I see an outline of green to produce... Oh! Okay, 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 okay. Now I see. I see the green outline of the wings on the shadow that would produce, like, the, 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 the wingscape. And I figured out that... It's only the the, the the woman's hand. Like when you you put a light in front of something very up close, it makes a giant shadow. Like you can make you can produce a very big shadow of her hand on the wall if you put if you put your your hand close to the projector. So what they did is they used the statue of the woman's hand close to the projector to make a, a, a set of wings and then overlap it on top of the man's uh, statue and that looks like uh, this and that one part alone is enough to fill in the rest of the yet aggressive shadow why did you say that in the first place you're right I, I apologize so, what part of the Queen statue was used to complete the Yatagrasu's shadow? Her hand! Take that! Think back to what is missing in our shadows. Five long, thin areas, correct? Now, what does that remind you of? Ah! That's, that's right. It can only be the shadow of the Queen's left hand. Francisca, can we please adjust the spotlight position so that it only shines on the queen's left hand? Alright, let's give it a try and see what we get! Yeah. The more I look at it, now I see that... To make the wings, there, there was like the head, then the thumb, the sword and the rest of the fingers, those make the the, the, the silhouette of... Uh... <laughs> it's... Hmm. Yeah, this is exactly like the shadow I saw. The culprit must have changed the spotlight's positioning beforehand. And then pulled the plug after people saw what the culprit wanted them to see. In their panic, the guests must have moved, moved the spotlights around, which, can, which we can assume was also part of the corporate's plan. By the time the lights came back on, the Yatagrasu shadow had vanished, which means that the Yatagrasu was a construct from the very beginning. Yeah! Take that! So you see, the Yatagrasu never did visit Alabast tonight. The only country that Thief visited was Babal, although it can be assumed that the Yatagrasu had an accomplice in Alabast. An accomplice? But who? I haven't figured out what well, I haven't figured that out yet. 
but I assume it was the person who set up the shadow show. I sense that the biggest clue yet to solving this case is the existence of this accomplice. Investigation complete! Question mark, how's the investigation going? Oh, it's bad. Detective Bad, have you come to join us in investigating the Yatagoresu? I've left the murder in Agent Lang's charge. And my only target from the very beginning is the Yatagoresu, so yes. So, what have you found out? I got a piece of evidence. May I see it? Sure, but you might regret it. We're here because we are ready to face whatever may come. So if you please. When people heard the commotion, bystanders started gathering. And one woman claimed, I'm telling you, I'm a genuine international journalist. Oh, this is a uh, lot of heart. She gave me an interesting picture. A journalist? Well, well, actually, she's a freelance cameraman. Yep, that's a lot of heart. This is the photo I got from her. Whoa! What in the world? It looks like... It's either... It, I don't know where she took that picture from, but it looks like someone is walking the wall, running the... Someone is wall running the the, the wall of the embas, Alabastian Embassy. Like, running sideways on the wall, like in the Matrix. It's either that or smut on the camera. Because uh, the, 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 the shadow looks like, uh, like, it could be the Yetagarasu, but how would she be able to get it on, get it on her, um, get it on picture? And as you know, Lather Heart, when she presents uh, visual evidence, it's never what it seems. I sh I saw it with I saw it with my own eyes. I tell ya, gosh darn it! The Etigrasu is flying through the air. The times, they are a changing. It's not just it's not just man, but ev evidence even they lie to us now. When was this photo taken? Apparently right after the fires on the 4th and 5th floors were put out. It was taken from a nearby building that you can see the embassy from. You see, so this was taken after the fire. Photo of Yetagarasu data jotted down in my organizer. The blur in this picture took off from the Babylese embassy flew over the boundary and headed for the embassy of Alabas. Objection! This is simply not possible! People are incapable of flight! Is that a fact? I've had the pleasure of dealing with a case involving a flyer, a flying person once. Yeah. The flying body of uh, Elise Donim. <laughs> Dot dot dot. Francesca doesn't even remember, even though she prosecuted for that trial on the first day. <laughs> actually, come to think of it, I've come across a case like that as well. Two, actually. Yeah, the second one would be uh, <laughs> the second one would be with uh, Maximilian the Magician. <laughs> Maybe it happens more often than we think. Mirror. Am I up to the task of solving the mystery behind this photograph? Well, the Yatagarasu took off from the Babylese embassy, so I should solve it. This is Edward. 
the Tigress who took off from the Babylese Embassy, so I should start from there. Francesca, I need to return to the Barbell investigation for a bit. Alright! Okay. I'll continue investigating on this side of the building. Alright, I'm counting on you. Welcome back, Mr. Edgeworth! Now, come on! Let's get back to our investigation! Yes, let's. Now, Francesca is no longer my partner, now it's Kay. Uh, where am I going with this? There's no one to greet me on, on the Babali side. I'm gonna I'm going in. Yeah. Uh, Polino went back inside the Babali's embassy. March 14, 1037 PM, Babali's Embassy Secretariat's office. The body has been removed. To think after all that running around, we're right back where we started. It would appear that way. Hi, Mr. Edgeworth. Have you found many skiller yet? I'm terribly sorry, Ambassador Polino, but I have yet to find the skiller. Then I guess his murder was really the work of the Yatagarasu. Let's get one thing straight. It was the work of the fake Yatagarasu. The real Yatagarasu is a noble vigilante who is only out to steal the truth. Miss Faraday, please don't make such a sad face. If there's anything I can do for you, all you have to do is ask, alright? Mr. Polino? Actually, there is one thing you can do. Will you allow us to take another look around? We didn't have enough time to conduct a thorough investigation earlier. Oh sure, please feel free to investigate to your heart's content. Also, there are a few in questions I'd like to ask you personally, Ambassador. If it will bring a smile back to Miss Faraday's face, then I'll gladly answer anything. Thank you, Mr. Paulino. You're a total gentleman. Ha ha ha! You don't have to waste such nice words on me, little miss. Hey! Sir Paulino! Those two sure got chummy awfully quickly. You know, it's easy to say we're going to investigate, but uh, where should we begin? We should probably start by comparing the state of this room before and after the fire. And then we should look into the matter of the suspicion person you spotted. Yeah, when I came into this room, that person was already gone. But I'm willing to bet that the person I was chasing is Mr. Coach and Skiller. We don't know that yet. However, it's hard to believe that person is unrelated. Furthermore, because the key the Yatagrasu stole seven years ago was found here, it signals that perhaps Miss Yu is also somehow involved. I knew it! That woman is almost definitely Mr. Coach and Skiller! Yet again, we don't know that. There are too many mysteries to be solved in this case. Yeah. Speaking of Yatagrasu and mysteries, I received a most mysterious photo from Detective Bad. Uncle Bad? He's taking part in the investigation too? Yes. He has been chasing after Yatagrasu for all these years. Uncle Bad. Hmm. Now then, I was told that this photo was taken just after the fire. What? This kinda looks like the person in the long coat I was chasing! Does this mean that I was chasing the fake Yatagarasu after all? I don't know the answer to your question, but I don't think people can fly either. But this could be how that person escaped! Well, we need to investigate a bit more before we can say anything about that. In any case, 
Let's not dawdle anymore and pick up our investigation where we left off. Begin investigation. Babylon's Embassy. Secretariat's office. There you go. This is debris from the fan that fell from the ceiling. This is the part I never get to investigate that I finally could. I'm gonna start with that. There's a lot of water on the floor. And uh, I'm gonna examine the window if, I, if they could allow me. There. You can see the Alabastian Embassy through this window. So where were you when you were investigating over there, Mr. Edgeworth? Hmm, ah, you can see it from here. I was there on the fifth floor. That's where the Mask the Second was killed. What? You don't mean THE Mask the Mask the Second? Aw, oh, poor guy. As a fellow second generation thief, I can't just turn a blind eye to this. Even though the mask the second was merely an imposter of the original. Okay. I'm gonna check the fireplace. Maybe it has a switch too. A fireplace, huh? So the boss office have them too. Two? There is a fireplace in relatively the same location in the Alabastian office. However, we found something there that I'd rather not recall ever again. I still can't believe that we found that lady's undershirt in the fireplace. Huh? If it was that traumatizing, why don't you try creating new memories with this fireplace? You could just climb inside and we can play hide and seek. And come out covered in soot? I think not. Ah, oh, you really are no sense of fun, Mr. Edward. I'm gonna examine this. Oh, it appears that this area was heavily damaged by the fire. I see... Yeah, I see the uh, the desk. There's a burned book. There's some burned documents. There's uh, Babali's ink. There's some sort of... Uh, I think it's a phone. And uh, something I cannot tell what it is. This looks like a nameplate. And uh, the ambassador's chair was... Well, is uh, tilted uh, on the floor, and uh, the floor is wet. Yeah, I guess we should hurry up and get started examining everything. We'll not rest until it's better to give your suspicions looking the king cranny. There you go. I'm gonna examine the chair. That looks like a very comfortable chair. Well, it doesn't look at all that broken, so why don't you just try sitting on it? No, I better not. It's very important that we preserve the crime scene at all times. Wait, but you're always touching all sorts of things at crime scenes. That's because I'm a prosecutor and it's part of my job to examine things. My job is to be a great thief! Which is exactly why you are not allowed to touch anything. Um. Oh! There's a drawer half open. I didn't notice this before. I'm gonna check that. It would appear that this desk also fell victim to the fire. But it doesn't look too damaged. Oh, I think we can rifle through this drawer a bit. Hmm, I suppose we really should take a look. Okay. There's some... There's some fan. There's a weird piece of paper. And uh, another note. And uh, I'm gonna check with the note. It seems that the contents of this drawer survived the fire went rather well. Now that's a sturdy desk! I guess that's the value of solid wood construction! Let's see if there's anything useful left in here, Mr. Edward! Examine this. 
This is a rather unusual shape for a notepad. I suppose this must be another souvenir from somewhere. Um, I'm gonna examine the book that's been burned. It looks like a bunch of flyers with coupons attached to them. Babal sure gives away a lot of different coupons. Maybe I should create one of my own. I could call it the Great Thief Coupon. And what kind of discount would that net you? The five finger kind. What else? And I'd steal an extra thing or two for the bearer. Things such as... Such as the truth. What else would I steal? Well, I wouldn't give to have a mountain of your coupons right about now. Okay. I'll try this. Manny Cochin. His name is written here on his nameplate. Why would you put a nameplate? Why would you put a nameplate with your name on it in your own office? I suppose it's to inform people in case they walked into the wrong room by mistake. You think maybe it's also there to remind you of your own name if you forget? Well, either way, it's never a bad thing to sit a nameplate on one's desk. Okay, I'm gonna examine the thing I couldn't examine. Like, I cannot identify this piece. There is only one book left standing there. That's a book? Treasures of the World. Wait, what? Let me see that. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. I see. Aha! The most important part was blackened by the fire. Why, cruel fate? Why? Looks like the map of where the treasures are located has been burnt. There is a bottle of Babylon's ink on Mr. Cochin's desk. And it looks like there's still a lot of ink left inside. The seal is unbroken, so the fire probably couldn't get into the bottle to burn up the ink. Hey, Mr. Paulino, it looks like your precious Babylon's ink is alright after all. What? That's odd. Ambassador, what do you mean by that? Um, well, it's just that there is something strange about the ink. Would you mind elaborating on that statement for me, please? Okay, I, I need to walk right to him. Okay. Now then, Ambassador, I'd like to ask about your movements before the fire broke out. Before the fire, which fire you're talking about? Which one? There was more than one tonight? Huh? Oh, I see. I guess you didn't hear about it. We had two fires here at the Babylon's Embassy tonight. What a bother all of that was. Wait! But the only fire we know about is the one after the Jammy Ninjas show. Oh uh, well, the first occur at the start of the Jamming Ninja show. Luckily, only the fourth and fifth floor on the embassy caught on fire. Not wanting to cause a panic among the theater goers, we decided to keep it internal. Then the fire after the Jamming Ninja show was the second one of the night. Exactly. So the fire I witnessed was the second one. Come to think of it, didn't Detective Bad make reference to the first fire? Flashback, when was this photo taken? Apparently right after the fires on the 4th and 5th floor were put out. I suppose this means that the photo was taken just after the first fire was put out. Photo of Yatagrasu data updated in my organizer. So then, what was the extent of the damage in the second fire? The second fire was contained to this floor, the third floor, 
I think it was left over embers from the fire on the floors above is what caused it. That's... how should I put this? A very bad stroke of luck. My office on the fifth floor, Manny's office here, and Manny's himself, all gone in the blink of an eye. Fires and bob all data jotting down in my organizer. I feel so sorry for you, Mr. Polino. Oops, look at me, going on and on. Now then, what was it you wanted to ask again? Uh, we were discussing what your action and whereabouts for today were. And if you happen to know what Mr. Cochin's action and whereabouts, whereabouts were as well. Yes, very well, let's see. I've been quite busy all day from morning until now. First, I woke up, then I brushed my teeth. After that, I had a roll for breakfast. Fascinating. How about if you just skip to the relevant parts for me? Oh, you'd like a condensed version? Alright, I can do that for you. Morning activities, alright. So what did Mr. Cochins and you do this morning? Well, originally we were supposed to meet and shake hands with the jamming ninja. But Manny and I wanted to turn into a photo app, so we were here tidy up the, this office. You helped clean Mr. Koshin's office? Why were you not cleaning your own? Oh, I think I forgot to mention this. But my office is currently undergoing renovation. Renovation. The Babylon's Embassy is undergoing renovation from top to bottom. And the logic box. Which is why both the Primidoc statue and the Babylon's knife set are down here. I see. Oh, but the tithing didn't take much, really. We just burned some files we no longer needed and expired coupons in the fireplace. <laughs> A fire of expired coupons. I bet cleaning up the fireplace must have been a real pain though, huh? Ah, uh, about that. I kinda forgot to clean the ashes out. Ha ha ha. I guess I'm up a creek without Manny here to get angry at me. An ambassador like yourself has been on the receiving end of a secretary's anger? Oh, he was very good at being very mad. Why, even just this morning, he got mad at me. I spilled some bubbly zinc in onto the back wall when I was burning the files, you see. And he got mad at me, saying that should treat the ink with more respect. Apparently, orders go up the chain... <laughs> Apparently, orders go up the chain of commands around here. Ambassador Palino's testimony, Jordan down my organizer. That's about it, what we did this morning, just some cleaning. Don't tell me you have no other work to do being an ambassador and all. Afternoon activities. Now then, if you could tell me what you and Mr. Cochin did this afternoon. Well, Manny and I went down together to the Theatrum Neutralis. We had to be there for the start of the Steel Samurai stage show. After the show started, I went back to my office with the fifth floor alone. So they were together until the start of the Steel Samurai show. A little while later, after I had straightened myself up a bit, I returned to the theater. Because I was to take part in the photo up on stage at the end of the show. Hmm. There was a commemorative follow-up at the end. It was a fantastic photo of the three of us, Ambassador Alba, the Steel Samurai, and myself. After the photo shoot, I went back to my office on the fifth floor to prepare for my headshake photo-up with the Jammy Ninja. 
This seems to be rather overworked for an ambassador. When I got out to my office, that's when the first fire broke out and I escaped down the stairs. My office was completely destroyed, but thankfully, no one was hurt. I admit, I ran away from the first fire as fast as, as my legs would could carry me. But during the second one, I pitched in and helped the embassy staff put it out. So it didn't seem to coach it again after the start of the Steel Samurai show. Yes, that's right. The next time I saw him, he was lying there in the internal sleep. I see. Ambassador Polino, I, ask, I, I thank you very much for your help. I'm sorry I couldn't be of any more assistance, Mr. Edward. If there is anything else, please don't hesitate to ask. We're all right. Mr. Cochin's Inc. Boom. This is what I wanted to talk to him about in the first place, but the, the thing, the, the way this game was made is you're gonna start with talking with Mr. Polino, and yeah. I wonder if you might tell me what you noticed about Mr. Cochin's bowl of ink. Um, I just thought of it right now, but during the second fire, man, he was worried about his office, so he came rushing back to it. Yeah! I called out to him, and when I received no reply, I used my spare key to open the door. But when I did, I was greeted by a roaring green flames. The flames were so big that I wasn't able to see into the room at all. The fire was green. What was the cause? Well, with crystal oils burn green when it's lit. As you can see by this lantern. Mm. And bubbly zinc is made from the same oil, which means it will also burn green. You know, I too had thought it was many zinc that had caught on fire. <gasps> oh! That was the smuggle. Bubbly zinc, he was destroying evidence. Many coaching. Oh my god. So that's why I was surprised to find out that there was still a bottle of ink left on this desk. The case of the perplexing green flames. Talk about the mystery. What exactly was it that caught on fire in here? Or maybe the money, the counterfeit money. Because if the counterfeit money was made with Bobbley's ink, it would burn green. Yeah! Alright. Now I'm gonna present something on this. Because uh, when I open the drawer, the deduce button popped out so I guess that the reason why is because the strange I, I'm gonna examine it again this is a rather unusual shape for a notepad I suppose this must be another souvenir from somewhere this notepad is the same shape of the mask the seconds note. I thought that it was a piece of paper but actually the whole piece of paper. I don't know uh, what it's supposed to be like. It looks like a funnel or a hat or a bowl. I don't know what but this this note that the mask to the second got on his hand was taken from this notepad. Of that, I'm 100% sure. Eureka! Yeah. The shape of this notepad matches the shape of this note we found. Hey, you're right! What is it? It looks like something straight out of Monument Valley. Ah, uh, yes. That notepad is a souvenir from somewhere in your country. We've been collecting them for the purpose of studying them, studying them you see. Yes, I do. You seem to be quite passionate about it. 
Oh, would you like to see my souvenir collection? I'd love to show it to you. Are you sure they haven't been burned to a crisp by the fires? Ambassador Polino, I wonder if you might recognize the handwriting of this note. Mm, this looks like Manny's handwriting. I see, in that case. Oh, did you figure something out? This note was found in Alabaster. Specifically, it was found mere being firmly grasped by the murdered Damask II. Damask II? Then this note? Yes, it was a request from Mr. Cochin for Damask II to steal the Primidoc statue. What? Manny tried to steal Alabas Primidoc's statue? We would know for sure if we, if we could run an handwriting analysis. Ambassador, do you have any documents that were handwritten by Mr. Cochin? Yes, I can gather a few and give them to you. I'll have to ask Detective Gumshoe later to run the analysis. I can't believe that Manny would even think of doing something like this. Do you have any idea as to why you would have requested the theft of the statue? There is one possibility, but mind you, it's just my personal speculation. Anything you can tell me would be of great help, Ambassador. Dog walking right back. I'm walking back and forth from the Ambassador. Yes, the statue were uh, swiped, were swapped, but um, so Mask the Mask the second would swap the Alabastian statue, come back in Babel, and then what? He would put the, the, the statue in Babal and then uh, Manny Cochin would put it back in Babelese in Alabast and um, the mask would follow him. Uh, something's weird. We'll see uh, um, how, it's, how it's gonna unravel. Job for the mask the second. I believe that you said that you might have an idea as to why Mr. Cochin hired the mask the second. Actually, I fear it may be my fault. As I was telling you earlier, we were to determine which statue was the real one as a part of today's event. But because of the Gatagrasu and the fire here, that got cancelled, didn't it? Ha 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 ha. I'm actually relieved the rest of the event has been cancelled. Where you see Babal's statue, well, it's just a replica. And did Mr. Cochin know that about... And did Mr. Cochin know that about Babal's Primidoc statue? Of course he knew, that's why he was the only person I could consult with. We'd have to do something once our statue was revealed as a replica. As to be expected, I was very nervous today, as this would impact our country's authority. Yes, I understand. Well, when I told Manny my concern, he said, Let me handle it, it will be alright. I'll find a way to make sure you're the ambassador of the reunited Todopia. At the time, I thought he was just trying to cheer me up. But when I saw that note, I realized he was serious. Mr. Cochin conducted a lot of business behind your back. I assume you did all that to ensure that you are the next Kudokan ambassador. But why was he trying so hard, I wonder? Well, duh! If he has so much control over the ambassador, he would control Kodopio in his stead. Next! <laughs> he was so much better at getting things done than I ever was or will be. I don't know the answer to why he was trying so hard yet, but I suspect he had an ulterior motive in mind beyond, beyond just simple kindness.
Oh, there you are, Mr. Edgeworth. Detective Gumshoe, have you collected the information that I requested? Yep, got it all right here, sir. There you go, okay? Feel free to take a look. It's for you, after all. What is all this, Gummy? It's all the information on this room that I got from the Embassy and Interpol people. Now we know exactly how this room was before and after the fire. Good work, Detective. Ah, uh, it was nothing, sir. I'm an expert at getting people to talk. Right. Wow, you two remind me so much of my father and Uncle Bad. What do you mean? As prosecutor and detective, your dynamic is just like their backs in the day. Theirs back in the day. Dot, dot, dot. Well, don't you worry. I'm going to find my own wonderful partner someday. And when I do, I'm going to become a good Yatagarasu, just like my father, right? Hold it! Please don't ask me questions to which I have no answer to, okay? However, I can say that it is truly a wonderful thing to find a partner you can trust. Hey, <laughs> you bet! So, uh, what now, Mr. Edgeworth? Well, I'd like to ask you to do a f I'd like to ask you for a favor. Yes? That gadget, Mr. Thief, is it? That thing you call your secret weapon? Oh, you mean Little Thief! Hey, you're starting to rely on it, aren't you? Hold it! Uh, I don't need a crutch like that. I'm only asking because I need it for the investigation. From the information the technique comes together, and the ambassador's testimony, I'd like you to please recreate this room as it was during the third floor fire. You got it! Alright, here we go! Dark skies of evening when no other birds dare take wing, one alone remains all seeing. Now witness the true power of a real modern day Robin Hood! Lil Thief, go! Okay, now we see the fire. It seems there are other things besides what the ambassadors mentioned that have changed. Okay, uh, I see a pile of money, a big, big pile of money. I see the fan, I see, uh, 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 the missing knife. Okay, there's a lot of stuff I need to in 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 inspect. It seems, okay, it's possible that we might find the escape route the person K saw use as well. Oh, whoa, 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 what is this? Is this some sort of light show I was not told about? This is the power of a true vigilante. It's recreating the room with the info I inputted. Really? This is certainly one interesting device you have there, Miss Faraday. Ahem. I believe it's about time we return to our investigation. Okay. The fire was set in front of the door, so no one could come in. The clock, w the, the grandfather clock was moved. Um, there was a knife here, now it's gone. There was a pile of money there, now it's gone. There was the Babelese flag on top of the fireplace, now it's gone. The, the chair was uh, tilted up. And um, there were curtains on the window, but now they're burned. You can no, I don't want to check the site. I already read all this already. Okay, I'm gonna examine the fireplace, so it's gonna be probably be gonna examine the the the, um, the bubble east flag. A fireplace, huh? So bubbles of it. Uh, no, the same thing.
it appears that the desk is largely unchanged from before the fire. Yeah, it just got a little burned, that's all. It's a very fine disc, I'm sure that even now it's still usable. If it's that great, why don't you trade your desk with it? No. It was just a suggestion. You didn't have to get all monosyllabic on me, you know. Check the chair. Oh, I already read that. Uh, the curtains are white. And um, there was... Even though it was dark and we couldn't see a silhouette... If, it, if the guy was flying... It had to be an invisible wire. It wouldn't be the if, if it were if he was using the the curtains for the flying act from the the, the picture, it would have been visible. I'm gonna check the picture again. of the Yatagorasu. Yeah, because um, there, um, there's a... Uh, he's walking, well, he looks like he's flying, or he's um, wall running from between the third and the fourth floor, approximately, or between the fourth and the fifth floor. And we see all the windows, none of them has their cur curtain closed, but some of them have, have their light open. Plus the light from the spotlight, it's pretty visible. We can see we can see the wall pretty well, even though the the the, the we cannot see the details uh, of the person per se. Uh, we we see the wall very very well, and uh, if he if he was doing a flying act, it would have to be invisible wire or uh, very thin uh, uh, iron um, iron wire. But uh, the curtains wouldn't be uh, feasible. It wouldn't. It, it would be too obvious. All right, I'm gonna check at the pile of money. Oh, so Babal is really into pushing their tourism industry, huh? Yes, it appears that way. You know, I really love to take a trip. Hey, why don't we take one after this case? You already have a destination in mind. Well, I ideally, I'd like to go someplace where I can continue my thief training. Well, if you want to learn the fine art of stealth, perhaps you should visit the studio where they make the Jamming Ninja TV show. Hey, that's actually a really great idea, Mr. Edgeworth! I can't believe she took me seriously. Oh, these are. This is not money. These are flyers. Um, I'm gonna check this. It looks like one of the Babali's knives was actually missing. F well, be oh, it looks like one of the Babali's knives was already missing before the fire began. So it would seem, especially since the other two knives and those were burned away. The remaining, the remaining handle was swapped, was swapped out with the, the remaining handle was swapped out with the handle from the real murder weapon, and Babal's national treasure was stolen. Poor Babal, don't you think? I'm not sure we'd lump the replica statue in with the rest of Babal's woes. Okay. But me too. I really thought that was the money. Uh, I'm gonna check the grandfather clock that was uh, moved for some reason. This grandfather clock it was apparently in a different position before the fire. According to the staff members, the clock was flush against the wall before the fire, sir. Which means that most likely it was moved by someone during the fire. Speaking of which, it's totally 11 o'clock now, but I don't hear any chiming. Huh? That's odd. 
It was still chiming right on the dot of every hour this morning. Maybe the fire damage its internal mechanism or something. Ambassador Polino, may we please take a look inside that clock? Sure, go right on it. Detective Gumshoe, if you could please inspect the inside of this clock. Yes, sir, I'm on it. Mm. Mr. Edward, I found this inside, sir. It looks like a length of wire, so this was caused the clock to stop chiming. But what was a long length of wire doing inside this clock in the first place? Ah, you see? This wire could work. The wire that was used to block the chiming mechanism of the grandfather clock could as well be used to do the flying act. Because it's thin enough, it looks sturdy enough, and from afar uh, it would be invisible. There's a long length of wire. Wire data jotted down in my organizer. Uh, why would someone do this to such a valuable clock? Sounds like it wasn't Mr. Polino that put the wire in there. But perhaps it was Mr. Coach and Skiller who did. These must have been the large green flames Ambassador Polino saw. With flames like these, it's no wonder he couldn't get in. Okay, by the time you came into this room, had the fire had already been put out? Yep, the fire had died out or something by that time. Then this fire is here, only burned from the time the fire started on the third floor. Until the Yatagras appeared and caused a stern bubble, I suppose. I guess Mr. Polino was just lucky enough to run into this fire as it was burning, huh? Yes, you could put it that way, and since you were the first to discover the body, you could assume that no one else entered the room until that time. No one other than the person you were chasing, of course. I knew it! That person I saw was definitely up to no good! I mean, that person could even be Mr. Coach and Skiller! That is very likely to be the case. After all, that person came into this room before you and must have chosen this room precisely because they knew no one would be in here. Okay, then maybe the green fire was where it was to prevent anyone from coming in? But then, what did the person set on fire to make the green flames? Hmm, well, whatever it is that person burned, it made a, red, a rather sizable fire. So yeah, uh, uh, the counterfeit bills are not available in the uh, in the simulation because that's what's actually burning. And since the fire is green, well, we've seen something that burns green, right? It's a bit tinier than these flames, but you get what I mean. Yes, I do believe that what you are thinking is exactly why these flames are green. Which fire related piece of evidence burns a flame? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh. I wonder, because I, I got two possible answers here the Bobbley's ink and the counterfeit bill. I wonder if both answers are correct. I'm gonna try the bills first. Take that! The source of the green uh, in this flame. Oh, 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 oh. Doesn't look like I got it. The source of the green in these flames is related to this. Oh, really? Well, I don't think they're related at all. Oh? Sorry, the green isn't related after all. Hey, you honestly apologize. It's time for being wrong. What? I'm, I'm always honest. And that's a good thing. Now just keep on doing it. Ugh, I need to think about this a bit more carefully. If I stick on, the answer should come to me. This green flame is the same as that other flame. Uh... Take that! You 
God is shitting me. Okay. They want me to answer the silhouette lantern. Take that. Yeah. Cause the Bobbley's ink was wrong too. This silhouette lantern, its green flame comes from the wood crystal oils it's burning. Yeah, that's the fire I was thinking of too. I love the green it gives off. Yeah, we need to check in the, 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 the wording. Like, the other flame, even though it's smaller, burns the same. I, we're, we're, we're jumping too far ahead. I think we now establish that the green flames were caused by wood crystal oil. Furthermore, we know that there is only one other thing made from wood crystal oil. Oh, you mean that thing Mr. Paulino was mistaken about, right? Yes, precisely. As we found out earlier in the investigation... Um, what? I don't get it. Can you fill me in, sir? Fine, I suppose. I'll explain it in a way that even you can understand. This is a thing made from wood crystal oil that Miss Ambassador Polino was mistaking about. Now it's the ink. Take that! Nah. We have to make baby step sense of logic. Remember, it's a kid's game. <laughs> People, when they play the game, they go, Oh my god, I'm wrong. Oh my god, I'm wrong. Oh my god, I'm wrong. Oh no, I'm game over. Reload. Oh my god, I'm wrong. Oh my god, I'm wrong. Yeah, I got it right! <laughs> Bubbly's ink is made from wood crystal oil. Oh, so it should burn the same color as the flames in the lantern, right? Yes, precisely. However, the green flames in this room were not from the bottle of Bubbly's ink. And this is where... And this is why I present the counterfeit bell. <laughs> Because we found the ink Mr. Cochin used on this desk, right? Yes, however, we know that Mr. Cochin was smuggling the ink in massive quantities. Now, what do you suppose he made using all that ink? I believe what he made with that ink is the answer to what gave birth to the green flames. Oh yeah, I begin to really feel the energy coming from you, Mr. Edgeworth! <laughs> it would appear that I finally found it, the smuggling ring, real gold. Made of bubbly's ink, this is a source of the green flames. Take that! What would consume that great of a volume of ink to make? That would be the counterfeit bills that were smoking that the smuggling ring made and are circulating in Zheng Fa. You're kidding! You're saying that it was Mr. Cochin who made the counterfeit bills? I am. I believe you could even go so far as to say that he stole! He stole the ball's printing press! Ambassador, Mr. Cochin had permission to freely use the printing press, correct? Why, yes, and I do remember seeing it used in the middle of the night. But never did I think he was using it for such a foul day. Ambassador, because of your secretary's crime, you will need to be investigated as well. Uh, yes, I suppose so. We're causing a bit of trouble for a few countries, haven't we? Oh boy. It's my duty to search out all who shielded Mr. Cochins and concealed his crime. For they are the ones who have started the fire in order to destroy the evidence. Counterfeit mail data updated in my organizer. Okay. Charles remain of a fallen ceiling fan. Oh, I've seen a few of these before. They spin around and around and play music. I believe you're thinking of a musical mobile for babies. Oh yeah, that's it! 
but they're nothing alike. They're totally alike. They spin those babies right round like a rake of baby right round. I was I wondering if they're gonna make a pop uh, pop culture reference. <laughs> Uh, I see. I guess I can see how you might might think that. Okay, what else is to be done here? I'm gonna talk to Gumshoe. Detective, you took part in the initial bubble investigation, correct? Yep, sure did. I also helped out put both fire. Oh, I also helped put out both fires, sir. But that first fire took me by surprise. I had a tough time escaping the fifth floor. First, I tried the elevator, but I guess someone else had the same idea because it was in use. If I hadn't remembered to use the stairs at that point, I've been burned to a crisp. Oh boy. Hold it! Wait, that's on! We always warn our staff that in the case of a fire, it's dangerous to use the elevator. Oh? Maybe someone rode in in the fair panic? Detective, did you see the Yetagura suit that came into the Barbadies embassy at all? I didn't personally. And the other staff members told me they never got a good look at the person either, sir. Hmm. I wonder if you could tell me a bit more about what you discovered, Detective. Yeah. During the fire. The second fire broke out around the time the Yatagarasu was spotted in Alabas. That's also when a suspicious person was spotted in Babal, which caused some panic. Hold it. So no one was able to get a good look at this Yatagarasu that entered Babal? Yeah, all they saw was a mysterious person wearing a long coat. But that's not enough to make a positive idea, you know. Still, it was enough to make the people who received the calling card panic even more. A person in a long coat sounds like the exact same person I saw. The Yetigra suit that appears in Alabas was proven to be just a fabrication, a shadow. In light of that fact, yet the Yetigra suit that appeared in Babal is also suspect. You can't be serious! Not when we're this close to capturing the fake, I mean, Teresto you. The Yetagras who appeared, caused mass confusion, killed Mr. Cochin, then disappeared. What you saw. By the way, Detective, why did you not chase after the Yetagras who? Uh, I, I did, but well, this embassy is huge, sir. I got separated from the other staff members I was with and was lost for a while there. Hold it! You didn't even memorize the layout of the building you were to guard, detective? Hey, I'll be sure to do that from now on, sir! But you know, it was thanks to me being lost that I was able to come to Kay's rescue. Oh? Is that a fact? Yeah, it was when I was lost and wandering around in the third floor always, sir. When I heard a scream, I headed towards it right away. Oh, that's probably from when I found Mr. Cochin's body. Yeah, I thought it sounded like her, so I got real worried and ran as fast as I could. And it was thanks to Gummy that Miss China wasn't able to take me away. He covered for me until you got here, Mr. Edward. Oh, I see. So it can be useful once in a blue moon. Still, it's too bad that Agent China got here before I did. I wonder where Agent China was before you found her here. And where's Agent China right now? Like, I haven't met her at all on the way. Well, just before I got in this room, I saw her coming out the room next door. China's location. She was in the room next to Mr. Cochin's office up until she tried to escape. In the lucky box. Even China mentioned something about chasing the Yetigras to herself earlier. Well, she appeared. She apparently helped in putting out the fire. The, 
she apparently helped in putting out the first fire. Then during the second fire, I heard she was busy chasing the Yatagarasu. She seems to be a very delicate agent. You would do well to learn from her. Why are you pointing at me when you say that, sir? We've examined everything in this office, but there is one thing that bothers me. Perhaps I should ask Ambassador Polino about it. Ambassador Polino, there is something I'd like to ask you about. Yes? About this office, it appears to me to be very similar to Ambassador Zalba's office. For example, the location of the fireplace and the position of the grandfather clock. Oh, that's right. You've also paid a visit to the Alabastian side of the embassy. Our two embassies actually used to be one. Yes, I knew. Even the Penfit mentioned that. Which is why the building is bilaterally symmetrical. Bilateral symmetry, because this used to be one embassy, offices on the two sides are symmetrical. So no matter which room, the location of the fireplace and the, and the like are exactly the same. Even where the art is located is the same. As my room is currently under renovation, we worked hard to make Manny's room look like the ambassador's office. You mean for, for your handshake photo up with the jamming ninja? Yes, that's right. I can't use logic, it's still in the cutscene. As soon as I have an opportunity, I'm gonna do it, okay? I mean, what's a photo like that worth if it's not taken in the ambassador's office, right? Yet another odd expression of Laval's obsessively competitive spirit with all of us, I take it. Thank you, Ambassador. That piece of information is all I need to connect the dots. Connect what dots? Well, anyway, I'm glad I was able to be of some help. All right. I got connected fireplace, bilateral symmetry, renovation, China's location. I'm gonna connect the fireplace with the symmetry. Maybe it's gonna say, oh, there's another, uh, there's another secret passage inside the, the fireplace too. Because when I inspected <laughs> the fireplace, uh, I didn't do squat! And they connect. The Alabastian and Bobbly sides of the building are symmetrical to each other. As we know that to be a fact, then this room's fireplace may also hide a secret passageway. A secret passageway? In Alabast, the fireplace turned out to have a revolving back wall. A revolving wall? Oh, it sounds like something out of a ninja house! Wow, there was a trick like that built into the fireplace, sir? What? This embassy holds that kind of secret? There seems to be a lot about this room you, that you don't know about, Ambassador. I guess it's time to pay the bill for letting Manny to do so much work for me. Please, I really want to know about the real Manny and what you know about this room. What are you waiting for, Mr. Edward? Let's get to the bottom of this. Agreed. And my first thought is that it's likely the killer used the revolving fireplace. Yeah. I'm gonna... It, it looks... Oh! There's an X it's in, the, in the wall of the fireplace. It looks like just another fireplace though, doesn't it? So how do you turn it again? In Alabast, I had to push... I, I had to push where the X was on the far wall of the fireplace. Oh! Oh, I see an X back there, sir! Let's see what I find when I push it. Hold it! Ah, you scared me, sir! 
There is something about this fireplace that lies in contradiction to the facts. Huh? But we found an axe when you thought there'd be one, right? We did. But that's not what I was referring to. Something is missing from this scene. What does this contradiction mean for us? Uh, I see wood. All I see inside this fireplace is stored to wood. Huh? That's odd. It doesn't match up with what Mr. Paulino said earlier. What is the meaning of this contradiction? Oh! The fireplace. The, the star of wood is not supposed to be there because if we take into account Pelino's testimony he still babbles ink into the back wall oh yeah 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 there's supposed to be ink in onto the back wall while burning files in the fireplace and he left ashes there so it's gonna be either the back of the wall or the starter wood I'm going to present this... Eureka! Ambassador Polino, you said that you burned some old files in this fireplace today, correct? Yes, I burned quite a few files this morning, actually. And after you did, you forgot to clean out the ashes from the fireplace, correct? That's right, but what? Why are you asking and why are you making such a scary face? I'm sorry, I admit I am a bit intimidating when I'm serious in, in any case. Take a good look at this fireplace and tell me what you find odd about it. Let's see, huh? Where did all the ashes go? Missing ashes, the ashes that should still be in the fireplace are missing, where did they go? In the logic box. What is the meaning of this, Mr. Edgeward? You don't really think that Ambassador Polino is lying, don't you? No, there is no reason for him to lie. And I don't believe his testimony is wrong either. It is the fireplace that's causing the contradiction. Okay, I wonder if you might update the fireplace data for me. You got it! I'll add in, in the ashes from the burnt files and... Sounds like we've pretty much figured everything out now, huh? Hmm. Well, it was nothing. All I did was follow where our leads led us. Oh, I sense it going on! You're about to dazzle us again, right? Oh, you mean that? Well, if what Mr. Edward is known for, you know... There is really no need for you two to dance around the name of what I'm about to do. Already check this area. If we push this X mark, the fireplace wall should turn. A revolving firewall, a, a revolving fireplace wall. That's neat, sir. We should hurry up and hold it. Wait, detective. There is something we need to examine about this first. Besides which, there is also something I like to test. Like what, sir? I'll tell you later, detective. For now, let's continue with the investigation. Okay, well, I'm gonna keep logicking. Uh. Revolving fireplace use and missing ashes. Yep, they fit. The reason as to why the ashes are missing is simple. It's not because someone cleaned them up, right? No, because even if someone did sweep them up, the fireplace is too clean for that. Ambassador Polino said he spilled some bubbly ink while he was burning the files. And yet, he is not, there is not a trace of the spilled ink on the back wall anywhere. Well, then I don't know what happened. Well, I'll tell you what happened. The two sides were switched. By using the revolving fireplace walls, 
the ashes were moved into the neighboring room. Which means that this is clear contradiction that the fireplace was used. Ah, uh, all that for a stupid piece of evidence. Alright, alright, we're gonna skip logicking until we can.